into this presentation. So this is called Approach Reporting Like Never Before, The Ultimate Guide to Report Types. My name is Evan Ponter. I'm the founder and principal consultant of Ponter Solutions, um, all of your Salesforce consulting needs. You can find me on Twitter at Real Evan Ponter or shoot me an email, evan at pontersolutions.com. And today, the idea is actually really simple. I'm gonna show you a framework where you can create a single custom report type per object in your Salesforce instance. So anytime you want to create reports showing account records, you're gonna use your accounts custom report type. Anytime you want contact records as the details in your report results, you're gonna use your contacts custom report type. And for every different object in your org, you're just gonna build one custom report type to support reporting on that object. A lot of the examples I'm gonna to use today are gonna to be based on the opportunity object, but just keep in mind, you can apply this framework to any object, standard or custom, in your Salesforce org. And the reason I came up with this framework is when I started as a Salesforce admin a few years ago, I was getting pummeled with report requests. As soon as I started, they were very excited to have a Salesforce expert on staff. So everybody came to me with report requests. Can you build me a report to do this? Hey, I have these two reports, I want to combine them. Or how can I get fields from all five of these different objects as columns in a single report? And as I jumped in to try to help them, the very first thing that you come across when you're trying to build reports to tackle some of these requests is choosing a report type. So I'm showing here the choose a report type screen in a brand new Salesforce org that doesn't have any managed packages. And if you type in a word like opportunity, you still have dozens of choices to choose from. And this can be crippling if you don't understand the nuances for all these different report types, what they do, and answer the question, is this report type gonna help me get the report results that I'm after for this report request? Now, some of these report types are standard. They come with Salesforce. If you use any managed packages, a lot of times those will have their own custom report types built in. And then you might've gotten frustrated with both of those options and gone to build your own custom report types, which just adds to the list. And then you'll start coming across this concept of objects with another object, object without another object, or even with or without. And sorting through all those intricacies can be very challenging if you have a stack of report requests on your desk or in your inbox or tickets piling up in your queue, and you're just trying to get through those report requests as quickly and efficiently as possible. So at the beginning, I just started choosing a report type that sounded good. Hopefully it had some of the right words that I was looking for. If a user wanted an opportunity report and they wanted account information and campaign information and all this other stuff, you just sort of cross your fingers, hope for the best and pick one. Now, as you are working with on that report and you add all of your filters, you add all of your columns and you think you have something the user is gonna accept, you send it off to them and you quickly realize that they are frustrated with the report because, hey, the same record is showing up multiple times in those report results. Or worse, how can I include fields from another object? Maybe you help them combine two or three different objects into one report, but of course they always want more. How can you give them more fields, more objects, more columns in the report, more filtering abilities? or grouping, maybe you want to group by something else that they didn't think of before. And the worst case scenario is you send them a report and they tell you, I'm not seeing all of the records I wanted to see. Salesforce is broken, right? Now, Salesforce is never broken. Salesforce does exactly what you tell it to do, like most other computers, as long as they're working right and don't have bugs. Um, so especially on this last point, if you are running reports and your users are telling you they're not seeing all the records that they wanted to see, there's five distinct things to check for to make sure that your report is set up right. So let's cover all five in some great detail here. Filters, 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 filters. The reason your report is not showing you the data you want it to show you is because your data is being filtered out at some level. 
Now there are five kinds of filters to be on the lookout for. And the good news is filters two through five up here can be changed at any point in your report building journey. So if you need to change the ownership of a record or the time frame filter of a report or any of your custom field filters or adjust your role hierarchy, you can do all of those things on the fly at any point. And the work you've done so far in building your report is not lost. Now that is not true for the report type. The report type is the very first filter being applied to your data. This is the very first funnel at the top that sort of narrows down your scope on what data are you going to be looking at and what relationships are you going to be utilizing in your Salesforce org. And the downside to the report type being a filter is you can't change the report type on your report once you get started. So if you choose a report type, start building a report, and you spend two hours adding filters, columns, and getting your groupings just right, and then you realize you need to change your report type because of some of the filters baked into that report type, you've just wasted two hours. You're gonna have to start over from scratch, choose a different report type, and do that same work over again. So once I realized how powerful the report type is as that first filter being applied to my report results, I wanted to make sure I was always choosing the right report type before I got started in building a report. So I set off to do some experimentations to really dig into the details of how do report types work and how can I make sure I'm utilizing report types most effectively so that I don't ever end up in that situation where I'm wasting my time because I'm on the wrong report type. So as I started understanding report types, I started building custom report types. And if you go into the setup menu and you set up a brand new custom report type and choose accounts as the primary object, you'll see that you can start relating child objects in your custom report type. And what I noticed about the objects that you are given as choices is it's always the child objects from whatever you selected in the level above. So if you're starting on accounts, the next level down is gonna show you all child objects of accounts, so contacts. There can be many contacts per account. There can be many opportunities per account. All of those objects show up in the next level. And once you choose an object there, you then, see the child objects of that object as the third level down. So accounts have many contacts, contacts have many contracts. And same thing for the fourth level. So as you're moving down your data architecture hierarchy, you're actually changing the granularity of the results you're gonna see in those, re in those report results. Um, because there can be many contacts per account, you're going to see many more rows in your results as opposed to just leaving your report type on the account object. Another thing you'll notice right off the bat is there is a four object limit when you're using this method. You can't include five objects on this screen when you're enforcing objects in your custom report type. Then I started to dig into the details of what am I actually seeing in the report results once I set up a report type like this. Even though I've chosen accounts as my primary object, it's highlighted here in orange, if I set up these other three objects beneath it, I'm not really looking at an accounts report anymore because there can be many contact rows, even more contract rows, and then even more opportunity rows for the same account record. What I'm really seeing is a filtered list of records for the object at the bottom of whatever hierarchy you set up. So in this example, you're gonna see a list of opportunity records and each one of them is related to a contract. Each one of those contracts is related to a contact and each one of those contacts is related to an account. So it's really sort of upside down in a sense where this is not an accounts report, this is more of an opportunities report, it's just a filtered opportunities report. And that's when I realized the importance of the primary object. Every single record in your report results must have a relationship back to the primary object. If any one of those 
relationships are blank, those lookup fields, from that object going back up the chain to the primary object, that row is filtered out of your report results. Essentially, that record will no longer show in your results. Now, once you put together all of those different considerations on what is the primary object, what is actually showing up in the rows, and every time you add a layer, you're changing the granularity of your report, you'll quickly realize a report type like this that enforces four different objects really only handles a very specific reporting scenario. And if you want to include fields from some other objects like um, information from the campaign or some price book information, maybe some custom fields from the user who created the contact or some information about the account owner, you're not gonna be able to do that when you're enforcing objects in your custom report type. So taking all of those things together, I realized there's a totally different way to approach creating your reports and using report types. You can actually start from the bottom of your data architecture hierarchy and create a custom report type for a specific object and then reference fields from its parent objects, its grandparent objects, great grandparent objects, and even great great grandparent objects. So let me show you an example. Let's take the same scenario we just looked at on the last slide and flip it completely upside down. So if we start with opportunities as our primary object, we can then edit the custom report type layout in order to reference fields from other objects. So with a few clicks, we can bring in fields from that same four object hierarchy we saw before. And then with almost no effort at all, we can bring in fields from the campaign, the price book, custom information from the user who created the contact, the account owner, literally any lookup field or master detail field that exists on your primary object or any object above it in your data architecture hierarchy, meaning working from child to parent or from the many side of the relationship to the one side of the relationship, you can traverse those relationships and pull in reference fields from any object across your architecture hierarchy. Now, this is very flexible. You can use this in almost all of your reporting scenarios. It's like a Swiss army knife. It's really good at simple reports for a lot of different use cases. So I like to call this a deluxe report type. And the best news is these are so easy to create. It's just three simple steps. The first step is to create a custom report type and choose your primary object. This is going to be the object you want represented as rows in your report. This is choosing the granularity of your data. How far down your data architecture hierarchy do you want to dive into the details in order to see the results in your report? The second step is don't define any object relationships. This is that screen where you normally can relate all those child objects. You actually want to leave just the primary object as the only object selected on this screen and click save. And then the third step is where most of the magic happens. So you'll be able to edit the custom report type layout in order to add fields from related objects. So let me jump in and show you just how simple that is. I'm in my lightning enabled org and everything I'm showing you today works in lightning. It works in classic. It works in professional edition, unlimited enterprise. As long as you have Salesforce and you have access to the setup menu, you can set up a deluxe report type. There's no, nothing to buy, no managed package to install. All we're doing is setting up a framework for ourselves to make reporting simpler. So I'm in the setup menu and I've searched for report types in the setup menu and you can find it under the analytics reports and dashboards section. And I'm gonna create a new custom report type. The very first step is to choose a primary object. Again, this determines the granularity of your data. What level of detail do you want to see in your results? So for this example, I'll use opportunities. I want every row in my report results to show me an opportunity record. I like to name my report type the name of the object followed by deluxe in parentheses. 
This naming convention goes a long way to help users across the organization find the right report type they need and be able to trust in the fact that they know that report type can be further customized if needed. Then for the description, I list every row represents an opportunity record. And after that, I include a list of all the fields I'm going to reference, all the, sorry, all the objects that I'm going to reference in this custom report type. And this will help us as we get further in the presentation, I'll show you how you can maintain these custom report types by including all this information in the description. Next, we'll choose a category for it. Unfortunately, this cannot be customized, but you can choose from any of the existing categories. Then down here at the bottom, this deployment step, you want to make sure your custom report type is deployed so that reports will run that are using this report type and your users can choose it in that list. So once we set that up, we'll move to the next step, which is really the hardest step because you have to resist the urge here to relate other objects. A lot of the Salesforce Trailhead modules, they highly encourage you, once you get to this screen, start relating objects. But we want to resist that urge and just leave our primary object as the only object enforced in this report type so that we have absolute clarity over what's gonna show up in the rows of our report results. Opportunities is the primary object. It's also the bottom of our object hierarchy because we only have selected one object. All we do on this screen is click save. And at this point, your custom report type is created, but we're not done yet. I really wish this was the third step of that wizard, but if you scroll down to the bottom of this page, you'll have this fields available for reports section, and this is where you can edit the layout for your custom report type. And once you click on that, you'll see this screen which by default has all of the fields from your primary object and really any object you've enforced in your custom report type will be part of the layout by default. In this panel over here on the right, if you scroll through, you'll find all those fields. And if you ever created a new field on your primary object, you can scroll through these panels and select it and drag it over. Now just above that, there's this add fields related via lookup hyperlink. This should be 10 times bigger and have fireworks because this is where you can start to traverse those relationships that exist in your data architecture hierarchy. Everything I'm showing you is totally dependent on the relationships that you have set up between your objects. So those lookup fields and those master detail fields are immensely powerful in allowing you to utilize this method. So starting from our primary object, the opportunity, we can traverse any of these relationship fields in order to access fields from another object. So if we traverse this contract relationship, we now have access to any field on the contract object, custom or standard, they're all here. So we can go through and select the fields that we need to reference in our report. Maybe we need the status of the contract, maybe we need to know the date the customer signed it, and the name of the contract. And once we select those fields and bring them in, you'll notice they have a little magnifying glass icon next to them. And that tells you that those fields are reference fields from some other object that is not an object enforced in your custom report type. And what I like to do to keep things organized is create sections every time I'm including fields from a new object. So I'll simply name my section contracts. And there's all kinds of use cases for getting even more granular with this, um, these sections will show up as the folders in your report builder. So every time you add a new section, you're essentially adding a new folder. And you can, you can get as crazy as you want to with this. So if you wanted to set up different folders for different sections of your object, maybe you have a bunch of fields all related to the same thing, you can certainly create sections to organize it that way. But I would say at a minimum, you want to have a section for each object, just to bring some sanity to this report type layout. Now the fun doesn't stop there. So we've added a couple fields from contract, but we can go back to this add um, fields related via lookup hyperlink, and we can traverse 
that contract relationship. But even on this object, we can still traverse those relationships that it has. So if I wanted more information about the customer who signed this contract, I can click view related fields here. And if you notice the path, I've just gone two levels up from opportunity to the contract. And now I'm looking at a contact record for the customer who signed that contract. And I can pull in any information I want from the contact object. Maybe I need their email, I want their full name, and I would like to know their phone number. And I want to keep my report type layout organized, so I'll create a new section for contacts. And I'll select those fields. I'm using the control key. You can also use command on Mac to select multiple fields at once and drag them down. Let's go back in the screen and let's add some more fields from other objects. So we can traverse that contract relationship. We can traverse that customer signed by relationship. We can go up to the account for that customer. And we can go up one more level to the account owner. One, two, three, four, five. I've just included fields from five different objects in a linear path using the, <clears throat> the relationship set up in my Salesforce org. So this is hugely powerful, very flexible, and allows you to grab fields from all over your organization. So if I select a couple fields that I want from the account object, I can bring them in. Now, what I would encourage you to do is only select fields that are being utilized in your organization. You don't want any blank fields taking up room on your report type layout page. And that's because there is a maximum of 1,000 fields that can be included in a custom report type layout. You can also reference up to 60 different unique objects. That's six zero which is way more flexible than the four objects that you're limited to if you're enforcing objects in your relationships in the custom report type setup. So, and I know a lot of people always ask about performance whenever I tell them about the limits. I've been using this method for four or five years at this point. I've given presentations like this all over the world and I've never run into performance issues trying to run a report that references a bunch of different objects or has a bunch of fields in it. Um, I would love to do some testing to see if there are any considerations. I'm sure if you have very large data volumes that you'll start to see some slowness in the report runner when it's generating, but I've never come across anybody have any concerns about performance when you're using this method. Again, be choosy when you're selecting your fields. You don't want any wasted space you know, seats in your 1000 field allocation. And that means not using this select all link. Um, it can be very easy to get to an object, click select all and bring all those fields in. But you'll notice there's a bunch of fields you might not be using. I'm looking at the user object here and there's this SU access expiration date and SU org admin expiration date. These are standard fields. They come in every Salesforce instance. I have no idea what they do. I don't know if there's data in them. It's certainly not gonna be valuable for anybody running reports. So we definitely don't want to include fields like that just to clutter up the experience. Take the extra moment to tailor that experience and make sure only valuable fields are included in your custom report type layout. And again, let's keep things organized. So you can be as specific as you need to in naming your section. Sometimes if you have a bunch of different ways to get to the same object, it might help to say this is the um, customer, customer's account owner to help emphasize which account owner we're talking about in, this, in the context of an opportunity. So we can select all those fields, we can drag them down into our new section. And I'll show you one other cool thing on this screen. If you're doing a bunch of fields from a bunch of different objects, um, especially if you're traversing a ton of relationships like this one is, if you look at the lookup path, the name of this field as it shows up in your custom report type is a very long um, label. And you can actually customize that label right from this screen. So if you select a field and either double click on it or select this edit properties button, you'll get this pop-up window 
that has the option to change how this field displays in this custom report type. Now this does not change the field's label. It doesn't change the field's API name. This is just changing the display value for this field in this custom report type. So it's very flexible and it can be tailored for a very specific use case. And if you were grouping by this field in your report, this very long label would look very ugly and waste a lot of space. So what you can do is you can shorten this up just by highlighting and, and taking out any unnecessary information. Maybe account owner email is as specific as you need to be for labeling this field. That'll work great. The other option you have on the screen is this checked by default. What that allows you to do is set up a template. Anytime you're creating a brand new report using this report type, any of the fields you have set up to be checked by default will be included as columns in that brand new report. So that's a great way to jumpstart your users if you know there's some information they definitely need to have included as columns. Maybe they want the full name of the contact. You can double click on that and check that by default. And right now those two fields will be included as columns for any brand new report. And those columns will show up in the same order that you see them displayed on the screen from top to bottom. Now, if you're doing a ton of editing of these fields, you can select a bunch at once using the shift key on your keyboard. And you can hit edit properties and edit all of those settings for multiple fields at once. <coughs> now, this is great. If you want to shorten the names on all these fields at the same time, I'll show you a trick that I've been using. Once this window pops up, if you right click on it and select show as tab, you'll have access to all of your Chrome browser extensions. And what you can do here is I've installed this search and replace Chrome browser extension. And if you click on that, you can search for and replace any text that appears on the screen. So what I've done is I can take this very long label, copy it, use search and replace to find it on the screen and replace it with nothing. So if I do that and hit replace all, I can edit the labels for an entire section of fields all with just a few clicks. And now if I click OK, those labels are updated in this custom report type layout very fast and efficient way to keep things organized, shorten up those labels and provide a wonderful experience for people building reports with this report type. You can use the same thing if you wanted to edit the checked by default option for a bunch of different fields. You can just select all the ones you want and then you can either do um, the select all checked by default or come through and pick individual one. Last little piece of info for this screen is every report has this built-in filter for a time frame. It shows up right here. This close date field is set up as our um, time frame filter. And this list of date and date time fields shows up in the same order as the fields that are in your custom report type layout. And the very first field is the one that's used by default. So if you didn't want the close date to be the default field used in this filter, all you need to do is take some other date field from your custom report type and drag it to a position higher than close date, and that field will now be used by default in your time frame filter. So that I can at least save one of the clicks that users are often frustrated with is setting up some default values for this default time frame filter. The only thing they'll have to choose now is the actual time frame, which I do not know how to default a value there, unfortunately, but we can get a default value set up for the field that's used in that filter. So at least part of the way there. Now, once you get all the fields included in your custom report type layout, you have them labeled the way you need them labeled. You have the ones selected to be checked by default. They're all organized in their sections. You can hit save on that report type. And let's go back to our report type section in the setup menu. And this is a, little, a couple tips for helping you maintain these custom report types. One of the downsides right now is 
anytime you add new fields to your instance, you have to maintain your custom report types manually. So to help with that, what I've done is I've created a list view of my custom report types, and I called it deluxe report types. Because we're using that naming convention where deluxe is in the label for all of our deluxe report types, you can filter down a list view to only show you your deluxe report types. And you can include the description as a column. And if you remember, when we were setting up the description for our report type, we included a list of all the objects we were going to reference in that custom report type. And where that comes into play is if you add a new field to your account object, you can use Control F or Command F on a Mac and search for the name of an object when you're on this screen and quickly see which custom report types reference fields from the account object. And that's in a much easier way to take inventory of your custom report types when you add a, a new field to like the account object and come through and edit those custom report types to include that new field. So once you get all of that set up, let me show you a couple things that these custom report types can do, this deluxe report type framework. So at the heart of any report, is one of these seven query scenarios. And I don't have a lot of time on this session to go into a lot of detail about these, but I do have a blog post I can refer you to so you can read up more about them. The good news is this deluxe report type framework works for six out of the seven scenarios. So anytime you need records from a single object, you can set up a deluxe report type to facilitate that. That's something like, show me a list of opportunities and I want to reference account fields and I want to reference contract fields and I want to reference campaign fields. This opportunities deluxe report type can handle that. Um, anytime you have a parent records with child records scenario, something like I want to see account information and opportunity information accounts as the parent, opportunities as a child, you can use a deluxe report type set up on the child object in order to facilitate that. So you would use your opportunities deluxe report type. If you really want to ensure that inner join there to make sure that every opportunity has an account specified, all you need to do is add a regular field filter to make sure the account name is not blank. So what we're able to do here is keep our report types very high level and don't bake any filters into them, then we can simply use the other filtering capabilities in the report builder to create those different reporting scenarios. The same is true for parent records without child records, um, child records with parent records, um, any of these other options, you can use a deluxe report type to facilitate those scenarios, just using field filters on the relationship field to make sure they are blank or they're not blank, or for this with or without scenario, just remove the filters entirely. The only time we can't use a deluxe report type is if you want to do a parent records with or without child records scenario. And I'll show you what's happening there. So I have an accounts with or without opportunities um, custom report type set up here. Um, this does say accounts is the primary object. I've selected opportunities as the second level object and I use the with or without option in the relationships. What you're going to see in the results of this report type is a row for every opportunity that specifies an account plus any account that does not have an opportunity. And that's how you can have results that look like this where you see all the opportunity details, you see all the account details, but you also see accounts that have zero opportunities. And there's just a, a dash or a blank or a null value in those cells for the child object. So if you need that scenario, you're still going to need that with or without style report. But otherwise, for every other kind of scenario that you're building reports off, you can use this deluxe report type framework. So next thing we're gonna do is simplify the menu. So we've built our report, we've included all the fields we need, we've seen what it can do, we know how to maintain it, 
Now we just need to put it front and center for our users to take advantage of. Because we still have this problem where when we search for a word, we have dozens of options in that report type selection screen. Now this is the only part of the presentation you have to switch to classic in order to set this up. But once you do, you can switch back into lightning and all of your settings will take effect. So in classic, on the report tab, when you click new report, there's this select report types to hide checkbox. And that gives you the option to toggle the visibility for all of the report types in your org. So let me show you how we can customize that to meet our needs. So again, if we're searching, we have all of these report types and buried down at the bottom of this list is our brand new deluxe report type that we want to put front and center. So if we switch into classic, go to the reports tab, click new report at the top, we'll have this check checkbox at the very top to select report types to hide. So once we check that off, we see this check mark next to every single report type in our org. And you can go through that list and toggle that check mark to an X in order to hide that report type. And this is a great way to narrow down those results to make sure we're only showing our users report types we want them to use. So after you get done, you can uncheck and see what the results will look like. And if you ever change your mind, you can always come back to the screen and toggle a report type to bring it back to life again. Or if you want to remove it, you can change it to an X. And when we switch back into Lightning and click on new report and start searching for an object, we've now narrowed down that list. I've gotten a lot of questions about well, what do I recommend leaving visible for each object? And at most, I think there's five report types you'd want to keep visible for an object. The first one is that standard report type that comes with Salesforce. The reason you want to keep that around is it will automatically have all fields from that object included in that report type at all times. It doesn't matter how many new fields you make, they're always available in the standard report type. And that's great if you are doing some development and you're adding new fields and you just want to quickly check to make sure that they have the value you want them to have it's great to just utilize that standard report type. A lot of objects have, or standard objects, have this history report for opportunities. It shows you stage changes, amount changes, and close date changes. Those report types can be helpful. You might already be using them in your org. They are actually showing you results from another level of granularity underneath of the opportunity. So those are handy to have. There's also field history reports for any object where you've set up field history tracking. Um, this shows you any change that you've set up for tracking, um, including the amount, the close date, and the stage for opportunity. But you can set up up to 20 fields to be tracked in the field history report. So you might want to keep that one around. If you're using historical um, snapshots, or I think they call it analytical trends, um, the name has changed a couple times, but there's a trends report type for every object that you can set up. And that'll show you snapshots of data from the last, the current month and the previous three months. Um, and those can be immensely useful to keep around. And finally, the deluxe custom report type that you set up for your org, you want to keep that one visible so that your users can use it. So at most, I would recommend keeping these five um, report types available and visible for your users to select from. If you want to narrow that down or some of these might not apply in all of your situations, you'll certainly have fewer in those cases. Now the only other thing people need to understand when they're searching for a report type is what word to type in for their given reporting scenario. And I like to use this riddle, every row represents what kind of record. So as you're listening to report requests from your users, try to get them to translate their needs into what level of granularity do you want to see? What you're really getting at is which primary object do you actually care about in the results for your report? If they tell you, hey, I wanna see the deals that we had last year, or what's our sales for last quarter? Just start to pick that apart a little bit in terms of, well, what do you want to see as the detailed rows in that report? 
and get them to translate. Oh yeah, we store all of our deals and opportunity records. So I would want to see a list of opportunities. Every row is going to represent an opportunity record. Perfect. They should type in the word opportunity when they're choosing a report type. And they'll have up to five options, maybe less if you've hidden some of the other report types or they don't apply. But encourage them to use that deluxe report type if they're looking for opportunity data. And this is where the naming convention comes in handy. Because if your options here are, do you want opportunities or opportunities deluxe? Hmm, deluxe sounds pretty great. I'm gonna go with that one. And you have the ability to customize that report type to add any other fields they might need from any other objects. No more fumbling around for the right report type. You can, with confidence, use this Opportunities Deluxe report to build any report that references opportunity data or fields from any parent object, grandparent object, great-grandparent object. You have the power to customize it if you need to in the setup menu in order to change the labels, the which fields show up as columns. There's so many great benefits to using custom report types and setting up a naming convention like this can totally transform the way an organization utilizes reports and has the confidence to build reports themselves. So how does that sound for a much better method of, repro of approaching reporting in Salesforce? Now I'd love to hear from you if you do set up this method. There's a hashtag on Twitter, hashtag deluxe report type, share your stories. We'd love to share and keep the community involved in this way, this framework and building out these custom report types to help their organizations. <clears throat> you can tweet at me, at Real Evan Ponter. I'd love to hear your story and share it with my group as well. And I have some resources for your journey to success. Um, you might want to take a screenshot of this slide. Also, if anybody's interested in this presentation, I'm more than willing to send it to you. Just shoot me an email, evan at pontersolutions.com, and I'm more than happy to share the slide deck with you. But on this slide, we have some trailhead modules to check out on Trailhead. Um, there's some blog posts. I am an author on reportforce.blog. So if you check out that blog, there's a ultimate guide to report types series at this point. It's five different parts. And this has all those details about those seven query scenarios, how I'm setting up these deluxe report types, and all the ins and outs of how report types work if you want to read more information. I've also linked to this hidden custom report type functionality article written by Brent Downey. You might know him as the admin hero. He goes into great detail on all the fun tips and tricks on that edit a custom report type layout screen. So definitely check those out. You can follow my blog, stay subscribed for more updates. That's reportforce.blog. I also have a couple videos here. There's a recorded video of this presentation from Dreamforce um, called The Ultimate Guide to Report Types. There's also a quick video on cross filters. I do a whole nother session on cross filters, but cross filters can help with a lot of your reporting scenarios. If you want data from one object, but you want to filter it based on the results of some child object, cross filters can help you accomplish that. Really cool tool if you haven't checked that out. And then there's another quick video on hiding report types if you want to see how to do that again. And if all of that is not enough resources for you, I am a Salesforce consultant. I would be more than happy to help you with any Salesforce problems that you are coming across. Please reach out to me, evan at pontersolutions.com. I'd love to work with you on anything you're facing. Thank you so much. I don't know if we have a couple minutes for questions. Um, I'd love to get into any thoughts that anybody might have out there. And I'll leave this slide up um, just in case anybody wanted to jot that stuff down. So thank you. Uh, if anyone has any question, they can please ask. And so yeah, even so this is uh, so uh, we have uh, like uh, um, uh, in status in type. So can we use that into the any of the, uh, you know, report type? Uh, we have like a in the standard Salesforce out of box report where we are using, you know, even invitee name, invitee status, invitee type. I guess event with attendee or invitee, that report type is already in Salesforce. Um, so which object are you using for the invitees? Yeah, activities. Activities. Activities, okay. So 
activities gets a little tricky because of the polymorphic relationship fields. Mm -hmm. um, there's the related to that lets you specify most objects in your org. And then that name field lets you choose a contact or a lead. I have an article on reportforce.blog about reporting on activities and some different methods you can use to get a deluxe report type to work. It can work, it just takes a little bit of extra effort. One option is to um, enforce the relationship in the report. If you're sure every single activity is always related to, for instance, a contact, you could do a contact or activities on contacts deluxe report type where you select contacts as primary, activities as the second object, you can still give it that naming convention and you'll still be able to traverse those relationships from the contact object working your way up. But as long as you enforce that relationship between contacts and activities, you'll be able to see every row will be an activity record on a contact object. Now if that's not good enough. I also have uh, go into detail about this solution where I create a custom lookup field on the activity object, uh, just a standard regular lookup field, and I use automation to populate it. And once you have that in place, you can set up a true deluxe report type on the activity object where it's activities deluxe, that's the only object in force, and you'll be able to traverse that regular lookup field. Um, it is a you're setting up a custom lookup field, but it's less fancy than that polymorphic relationship because a regular lookup field only lets you specify one kind of object. So if you wanna check that out, um, go to reportforce.blog. I think it's only like two or three posts ago. It's called reporting on activities. Okay, thanks. Okay, a question uh, is uh, reporting different in enterprise and professional edition, like do they, uh, professional edition has any limitations regarding it? There are some different features, like when we were talking about these different um, report types that you might want to keep visible, those aren't always available in professional edition, um, like these five here. I know mm. they don't allow the trending reports and I am not sure about the history or the field history. I'm pretty sure you can do field history. Um, but as far as setting up a deluxe report type, you can do that in any edition of Salesforce. Okay. As long as you have the administrator permissions in order to set up custom report types, you can set up a deluxe report type. I think maybe we can try it out in uh, the, new, uh, the new license we have in like Salesforce Essentials and we can give it a try in that also if we can implement this framework over there. It would be a great, yes, uh, great task to implement it over there and see how till which extent it can work and help us out over there. Absolutely, yes, this should work in essentials. Um, I think I've checked for that. Um, just need to make sure you have permissions to build custom report types. Okay, cool. So I think we are done with the questions, and we would like to thank you a lot for the presentation and sharing your story. And I think we, uh, many of us didn't had any idea about reportforce.blog, but we'll have a look at it and I'm sure it's gonna help us in reporting for future. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you so much for having me. This was a pleasure. Um, and please again, reach out, um, Evan at Ponter Solutions. If you have any other questions or want a copy of the slide deck, I'd be more than happy to chat with you. And yeah, definitely give reportforce.blog a subscribe if you have a moment. Great. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.